Good morning. It's a very warm welcome to our worship this morning. We begin our worship with hymn 194. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit on really as we spend a moment in reflection. We bring before God our sins and failings, our regrets that we've caused and we come to God, the God of mercy and grace and forgiveness. Jesus Christ, risen Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us. 
We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the collect for this day. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Acts chapter 3. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran towards them in the portico called, called Solomon's portico. Utterly astonished, when he saw it, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you 
and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If Christ had not been raised, him 204. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts come into your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you have seen that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? He gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Lord of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance 
and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There have been two occasions when I could have ended up in court. Let me explain. There were two occasions when I was asked to be a witness. On the first occasion, I was walking down the road, minding my own business, and I could see what was going to happen ahead of me. There were two cars. One was going pretty fast down the road. Another was coming out of the junction. I could see what was going to happen. And it did. A collision. The drivers jumped out, started remonstrating, exchanging details. And then one of them spotted me. He came across. You've seen what happened, he said. Would you be a witness? Would you give details? Fortunately, I heard nothing more. You are witnesses of these things. Last verse in today's Gospel. And so, as we come to the end of Luke's Gospel, a new beginning. The disciples are sent out to witness to their faith. Luke continues the story as the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. And the Gospel is shared and spread by those disciples who could witness to testify to what they'd seen and experienced of Jesus. So what of us, generations later? The events of that first Easter are far, far in the past. The first disciples have passed away. There came a time when there were no more disciples who had walked the earth with Jesus. So how can we be witnesses today? In what sense? We Rather like Thomas in last week's Gospel, we have not seen. But if it depended on literal eyewitness, then the Christian faith would have died out long, long ago. But it hasn't. People in each generation down to this generation here today have witnessed to their faith. Witness to the Christian faith. I think it's becoming more and more important in today's society as the contact between the population and the Christian faith becomes more and more tenuous. The basics, perhaps we take for granted, are not known to many people. Why there's a holiday at Easter? Why we should call that day Good Friday? Our witness is so important that we understand our own faith so that we can pass on the foundations of that faith to the next generation junior church across the way, our work with children and families. In this way, we do witness to our faith. We can help keep alive the Christian story, our history, our Lord, his life, death, resurrection, all that it means. That's a humbling thought for each one of us, a responsibility, but also a privilege. I did say at the beginning there were two occasions when I was asked to be a witness. The second occasion wasn't about facts or evidence, things I'd seen. There was a lady in the parish, I won't name the parish and I won't name the lady. She was an occasional worshipper at church, didn't see her very often, but she arrived one Sunday looking very smart, big smiles, morning vicar, as she arrived in church. At the end of the service she said, I wonder if I could have a word. It turned out She'd been stopped on the motorway speeding quite a bit over the speed limit. If necessary, she smiled at me. I wonder if you would be a character witness for me. I felt a bit uncomfortable. I didn't know her that well, and she, well, she had been speeding. Would you say that you know what an outstanding character I am, she said. How this was really a, a one-off incident and, and how upset she was about it. 
Fortunately, I, placed, uh, I faced no moral dilemma. I heard, again, like the first time, nothing more. But it sent me thinking about that word we use, a character witness, not facts, but character. Was it about her character? Was I supposed to say good things about her? Or had she really asked a vicar to speak for her, to make a good impression, to be credible, a credible witness, a character witness? Perhaps she was hoping if it ended up in court, I'd turn up in my clerical collar. Was it about my character? Someone who was, or at least, looked credible, convincing, worth listening to. You see, I think we're called to be character witnesses in that second sense, not simply passing on the Christian heritage as history or facts, important though they are. Perhaps it has to do with the kind of person we are and how we live our lives. Because it's been said, the only Bible people read nowadays is you and me. The understanding understanding people have of Christians, people who profess the Christian faith, people who are followers of Jesus, is very much formed by you and me. We are part of the message. It's not simply the gospel message which is attractive. God's love and forgiveness, his grace, the teaching of Jesus, the wonderful things there. It's also about the messenger you and me. People are more likely to find the Christian faith attractive if they find Christians attractive. The corollary, as we know, is that if people turn away from the Christian faith, it's very often because of Christians and how they behave. This is what I mean by being a character witness. Our character, the way we live our faith, is itself a witness to the Christian faith. Our love for our Lord, our desire, challenging that they may be sometimes to be there for other people, to serve them, to help others, is evident in our lives. Again, a great responsibility, but a great privilege. Looking back, and it's been the case for me certainly, and I'm sure for a lot of you, and certainly research shows for many, many people, coming to faith is about someone else touching us by their own faith. Maybe an individual or small group of people something attractive about them which made the Christian faith attractive, someone who was a wonderful witness to our Lord, to our faith. And you and I could be that someone to other people. You are witnesses of these things. Amen. So as witnesses, we stand to affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray.
Having redeemed us by his death, Jesus can offer us the forgiveness of our sin, which sets us free to live. So may God be glorified now as we commit ourselves to work, the work of prayer, interceding for those in all kinds of need. In our worship and in our openness to the spirit of life, in the church's longing and outreach, in priests and the people, and all seekers and honest doubters, Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. In the welfare programmes and peacemaking missions so urgently needed at this time in many places around the world, and in the struggle to uphold justice, we pray for all those involved, and in the aid to be given to the hungry and homeless. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. In the loving and costly commitment of mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, in the determination to forgive and forgive in all the lives shared and cherished. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those working in the nursing and caring professions comforting and healing in the daily patient struggle, with pain and weakness, and in the practical good humour of caring. We pray for those who are unwell, those known just to ourselves, and for those who have asked for our prayers. And we name Roderick Ramage and family, Lucy Natras, Liz Durrant, Linda Rutherford, Susan Wood, His Majesty the King, and Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those in the twilight of the earth and facing death, and those who have died. We are asked to pray particularly for Richard Mullard, Terry Panton, and Linda Marriott, and for any, any known just to ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. In the freedom offered through forgiveness, in the joy of resurrection life, in the hope of eternity, in all this may God be glorified. And we say together, merciful Father, Accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake, sake of your Son, son our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We stand to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. And were they glad when they saw the risen Lord? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Are we, are we, what are we, are we actually, <laughs> actually sharing peace? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our offertory hymn, number 621, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
please stand or sit as you would normally do um, your normal practice here. All are welcome at the Lord's table to receive communion or a blessing. All are welcome. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. And now we give you thanks, because through him you have given us eternal life. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ and with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
As we prepare to serve God in the world and to witness to our faith in our words and in our lives, we pray together. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good to be back with you. I've forgotten the... Um, I've got the hang of... It's all, coming, it's all coming back to me now. It is good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, and Junior Church, what have you been up to? Who's got, who can tell us what you've been up to today? Here we go. Here we go. Have you got something to come forward and show us? It's on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to come and show your pictures? So today in Junior Church, we thought about how Peter felt um, after he had denied knowing Jesus three times and he knew he'd made a terrible mistake and he felt awful about it. But we learned that when you make mistakes, you can turn them into something good. Or if you can't turn them into something good, you can say sorry, which also makes amends. So we all drew a scribble on a piece of paper, which is a bit like when you make a mistake. But then we turned our scribbles into something nice. We turned them into a drawing. So Helena here did a scribble and turned it into the po cat. Uh, the, a bow tie on a cat, and Mimi turned her scribble into a dog, and Dominic turned his scribble into an apple, and Ellis turned his scribble into an Easter egg, and we've got loads of good ones. Louis, you turned your scribble into some flowers, and we had a gruffalo and a shark, and we had some lovely hands and some hearts. So we all made really nice things after making um, a mistake. And that's what we did. That's what we learned today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you so much. What a wonderful thought. We can turn our scribbles, and we'll all be scribbling later today. We will, inevitably. But we can turn those scribbles into something good and ask God's forgiveness, which is always, always given to us. Thank you, young ones. That's super. Thank you. Great to see so many of you here. There we are. Um, you know, I know, I know. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I'm just going to ask the, not the junior ones, the more senior members to share with the young ones what we were doing while they were across there. What were we doing today? Thank you. Witnesses. So what does that mean, Judy? To help the young ones understand what being a witness means. Really, couldn't have put it by better myself. Thank you. That's right. And we can witness not just not just well. The, the, I suppose the thing is, yes, Judy, well done. <laughs> There's that phrase in there: not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And St. Francis said, "Do good in all ways, using words if you must." So the first thing that people notice is about the way we live before we open our mouths. So it's about witnessing in that way as well. Michael, notices, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Good morning, everyone. Uh, tonight at 6.30, there's even song uh, led by John Muss and, of course, the choir. Uh, electoral roll forms are at the back of church. You have to be on the electoral roll uh, if you want to vote at the APCM. And if you want to come to the ABCM, you get an opportunity to vote the church wardens off. So go and get on that electoral roll. If you want to check you're on the electoral roll, copies of the existing roll are also at the back of church. There's a litter tidy up this afternoon at 2 o'clock, and the Salford van collection, you must be there before 1 o'clock. There's a farewell gift for Kaz that we're putting together. Uh, after five years of retirement, she's retiring of ministry at St. Peter's here. You can pay by cash. Now, there's a red post box you'll notice at the back of church. There's some envelopes if you'd like to put some cash into that. You can pay by banks, but please put a reference as to what it uh, is referring to. Or you can pay by card via the church wardens. There will be a party on the 30th of June 
uh, a bring and share party, details of that to follow. Uh, there's a lunch for RNLI on the 4th of May, um, and thank you choir, I'm being told they're small but beautifully formed, but thank you for coming. Thank you Faye uh, and Anne-Marie, and thank you Keith for today's service. Thank you Michael. Thank you. Lovely hymn to close our worship today is number 667, The Lord of the Dance, 667. God the Father, who by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.